Welcome to Strategy. Principles are stronger than principalities. Strategy is a program meant to teach you how to convert prophecies into realities and secrets of how these men you admire became great. Join Pastor Charles Usazua as he teaches you strategies on how to be successful. Pastor Charles Usazua is a president Rock of Ages Christian Assembly International Incorporated, an author and choice speaker in conferences across the world. Highly anointed and most sought after speaker, a mentor of CEO and endowed with uncommon wisdom, a generational gift to the body of Christ. Strategy, your pathway to success. Hello, Pastor Charles Osazua is my name. I've been talking on prophecies and reality. And I remember that I told you that you don't prosper by prayer. You don't prosper by fasting. You don't prosper by even giving. You don't prosper by raising altars. I remember I also told you that all of that are scriptural but foundation. They are just foundation. And in course of our teaching, we looked at a few things. But today I'm taking it deeper. We are looking into the principles of Jesus. What are those principles of Christ that I can apply in my life to put me on the top there's something bothering me that i need to share with you we should not allow what did not happen in the bible days to happen in our days in the bible days abraham was the richest in his time there was no sinner richer than abraham in his days in the bible days god so much prospered isaac that the sinners the philistine the unbelievers envied him in the Bible days, you remember Jacob? Look at Job. The Bible says in all, in the days of Job, there was none that had integrity and was blessed as Job. Job was wealthy. He commanded influence in his days. What of Joseph? Joseph was in command. Listen to me. We are going to look at some of the things that people had in their days that put them on advantage position. So if you are a child of God, and we allow what did not happen in the Bible to happen in our days. There is a problem. And that, those problems are the things that strategy on television is trying to address. Now, a few things I will share with you that will help you. We are going to look at about seven principles of Christ that will help you. The first principle of Christ, sir, if you lack it, you lack weight. If you lack it, no matter how much you pray, You'll be like what Paul described as him that beated the air. Now, one of the principles of Jesus you must have in your life, if you must excel like Abraham did, like Joseph did, number one is the power of vision. Can I ask you a question? What are you living for? What are your projectors? What pictures are in your mind? It's only vision that gives expression to a man's life. From day one that I started this ministry of ages as a pastor, I know that my vision is in four stages. I know the first stage, I know the second stage, I know the third stage, and I know the fourth stage. From beginning, where there is, when you don't have vision, sir, you don't have motion. It's only a man with vision that if you don't have vision, sir, you wake up 11 a.m. without knowing. If you do not have vision, you will still be sleeping in your bed by 12 o'clock. The reason why your life lacks order now is because there's no clear vision. There's nothing you are pursuing. You wake up, you eat, you sleep, you wake up, you eat, you sleep and die. My dear, it is time for you to begin to ask yourself questions. What am I doing here on earth? What is the vision that I'm here to accomplish? If you cannot answer this question, you are not ready to be at the top. The second one here is passion for your vision. Now, it's not enough to discover vision. Many have discovered their vision, but they have no passion to drive the vision. A vision you don't feed cannot feed you. A vision you don't carry cannot carry you. 
a vision you don't give to cannot give back to you this is very very important what drives vision and brings it to enviable tangible reality sir is the ability to have passion for what you believe so passionate that you are ready to die and give everything you have you know in the book of matthew chapter 13 and verse 44 the bible said the kingdom of god is like a man who found a treasury hidden in a land and went and sold everything he had that is passion sir that will make a man sell everything he possessed everything he had just to buy the vision that god has shown him ladies and gentlemen it's very important right now that it's not enough to have a vision you must have hunger passion for your vision to an extent you are ready to give all to make sure that your vision comes alive the third one is where many believers have missed it the power and the force of planning i can put it to you now as you are standing here you had some of you had no plan for 2017 as i'm talking to you now in 2018 you have not started strategizing there are some people that are just passing through this life they have no plan no vision nothing those are not the kind of people i want to hang around with i want to have hang around people that know exactly what god has raised them for my prayer for you today the discipline to sit down and plan May God release that discipline upon you. Wherever you are watching me from, that discipline to sit down and plan your department, plan your organization, plan your family, and come up with a document. This is the plan. In the next two years, this is where I will be. In the next three years, this is where I will be. I need that plan. For questions and comments, please email us at Your questions and submissions will be read and treated live on the program. Strategy, your pathway to success. The other one is the power of teamwork. Now, having drawn your plan, your plan determines who to connect with. Who is the man I need? Who do I connect with? It's your plan now that determines who you connect with. In Matthew chapter 4, and verse 18, Jesus saw Peter and Simon, his brother. He said, follow me. It's not everybody he saw that he said, follow me. Now, you need a plan, sir, to know who to connect with. Teamwork. There is no assignment God has given to you that will not require other men. There are people God has raised to partner with you. Exodus 31 and verse 1. And the Lord spoke unto Moses. See, I have called by name Bezili the son of Uri, the son of Hor, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the spirit of God, in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship, to devise cunning work, to work on gold and silver and in brass. You are busy doing 32 days fasting. You can't work on gold, you can't work on brass, you can't work on silver. You are a disgrace to redemption. You say you are a believer, no matter your title, you have not, you can't, you don't have skill to work on anything. That's why you are beggarly. That's why you are, in your phone, you have sent text messages to everybody asking them for help. You have become a burden on all the people you know because you need help. Haven't gotten your plan, you need teamwork. You need to network with people that God has raised to be part of that work. The next one is the power of focus, sir. Can I tell you something? There are too many things that want to distract you. Yes, too many things. Potiphar's wife wanted to distract Joseph. He said, come and lie with me. It was distraction. Genesis 39 verse 9. Potiphar's wife wanted to distract Joseph. Sambalat and Tobiah wanted to distract Nehemiah and Ezra. Huh? You need to know. There are too many friends right now that want to distract you. Check your phone. As I'm preaching, talking to you now, teaching you, just get your phone out. Get it out now. Bring out your phone. Check all the numbers on your phone that have not added. Delete them. Block them. 
Oh, hello, sir. I just want to let you know that I watch Man U versus Chelsea. Has that added to your life? It's enough to watch it, but don't make it. You know, there are so, if you see some things that people busy themselves with, you will know these people really have nowhere going. All these, your friends that will argue, oh, who is the richest man in Nigeria? Their money is not in your pocket. Eh? Oh, uh, uh, resign or resume conference. Look, you don't have time for such things. As a matter of fact, I walked into the office of great men, the Bishop David Oyedepo, Bishop uh, Abuye of Goshen. In fact, even Dr. Polenenche, I walked into his office, his television was not on. These people don't watch television because they are distraction. Find out what is trying to distract you, sir. You are too distracted. That's why you have disconnected from your vision. You have disconnected from your plan. Too many things, too many people wants to distract you, sir. Can't you see that in John chapter 6 and verse 15, they came by force to take Jesus Christ to be the next president of Nigeria. They say, you, they didn't understand that his saving capacity was not political. You say, in fact, you don't have a choice. They, all the political parties have adopted you. John 6, 15. You know what he did? The Bible says he escaped and ran away. It, and left the people. Left alone. I was alone. Why? That was not the plan. The plan was to die on the cross, not to be in politics. Many Christians have lost their hard earned money because they've told them to come and be governor. They've lost their hard earned money because they want to function where God did not place them. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1, the Bible said that God created the heavens and the earth. In verse 2, the earth was without form and void. In verse 3, and God said, the darkness that was in verse 2, did this stop God from speaking? God was still speaking, and God said, and God said. That means he was focused. He didn't allow the darkness around him to disturb him. All of you think they tie you in the village. You don't know what you are doing. Keep moving. Those are distractions. You don't have vision. You don't have plan. And you said there is one demon that held you in the village. I agree. The demon that held you is called ignorance. And ignorance, you don't cast it out. You conquer it by knowledge. You don't pray away ignorance. No. It's not a demon, so you can't cast it out. The only thing that cure ignorance is light, revelation, illumination, knowledge. That's what cures ignorance. The next one, the force of wisdom. There is no man, sir, that you celebrate who has not embraced wisdom. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7, scripture says, wisdom is the principal thing. Even Solomon in his days had to ask God for wisdom. Sir, without wisdom, you won't go far. Wisdom is the greatest key of biblical, scriptural wealth. Now look at Proverbs 8. We are still talking about wisdom. Proverbs 8, 15. By me, kings reign. Wisdom said, by me, kings reign. Princes decree justice. So you can't reign, sir, without wisdom. You know, the Bible described Jesus as wisdom. You cannot reign, sir. Now, wisdom tells you what to invest in. Wisdom tells you what to say in the board meeting. Wisdom tells you how to go about your meetings. Wisdom is powerful. Look at verse 18. Riches and honor, they are with me. <laughs> Wisdom said, riches and honor, they are with me. Durable riches, lasting riches. I'm talking about wealth that will not die with you. Wealth that when you die, you transfer to your next generation. Your next generation transfer to your next generation. Abrahamic order of wealth. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about when you are gone, less than 30 years after you are gone, everything you have labored for your children have sold all of them to pay bills, to live life that they are not used to. That's not what I mean. I'm talking about, he said, durable riches, they are with me. Sir, there are people I know, they are not educated. But you see sense in them, wisdom. When they talk, you can trace where the word came from. Wisdom. A foolish man, sir, can never be wealthy. I can guarantee you, a foolish man can never be wealthy. The next one 
a specialized skill. The seventh one, specialized skill. He said, the lazy man roasted not that which he got in hunting. Why? He know not how to go to the city. Now, there are some skills you develop, sir. You can't be poor. Do you know as I speak to you, there are professional welders. They weld oil pipeline. They are not poor people. Specialized skill. You need to begin to look inward. Like Bezi Lee. He said, go and look for Bezi Lee. For this man has skill. Do you know why Jesus Christ chose Peter? A man who can catch fish can catch men. Very simple. He already saw Peter making effort to, to do something. He said, Master, we have told you, but we got nothing. He was trying to get fish. He already has a net. He already had boat. He already had the skill. Ah, Jesus, I can use this man. So it's better I engage this man who is already catching something than a man who is folding his hand idol. Sir, you need specialized skill. This is very important. A man's gift, make room for him. No room, no gift. Now, I look at our local league in football. I look at UEFA Champions League. You can see the difference. Look at our stadium. Look at all over Nigeria. We don't have maintenance culture. People are not put in charge to do things. Specialized skill. This will help you. You cannot just sit and say you are a graduate. Look for something. Bring that something that God has given you to affect your generation. I know a young man today who is a multi-millionaire. How did he do it? Along the line, he became an estate agent. Before you know it, bought a property, developed, sold, and God blessed him. I know a man also who was an intermediary between companies and companies, helping them get skilled workers. Today he's blessed. You have no reason to be poor. You have no reason to be small. You have no reason to be where you are today. I can tell you, God in heaven has even excused himself. In Deuteronomy 30 and verse 19, I call heaven and earth to be a record against you this day that I've set before you blessing and causes. He said, choose that you and your children may live. So God has exempted himself from what is happening to you. So what do I mean? You need vision, sir to matter. What do I mean? You need passion to pursue your vision. What do I mean, sir? You need planning on paper that you will follow. What do I mean, sir? You need teamwork. You need to identify people that can be on your team. Everybody is not called to be on your team. Look at me now. I have wristwatch. I have shirt. I have belt. All these people are members of my team. Just imagine a football match where everybody is a left, left winger. Just imagine a football match where everybody is a goalkeeper. Just imagine a football match where everybody is a defender. The beauty of the football game is the difference in wing. It's the difference in the wing that brings beauty to the football game, sir. So you need to connect with your team members. One of the things that happened to me when I came to Benin, I didn't see anyone who could influence me. You know what I did? I have to leave Benin. I connected to the Living Faith Churches, the Winners Chapel, connected with Bishop David Yedekpo, connected to great minds like Pastor Paul Enenche, connected to great minds. You know, I will go to Salvation Ministry, I will sit down and hear what God's servant has to say. Then my coach, David, Bishop David Abioye, that is why I'm doing what I'm doing. Influences around me. You need to locate. Your plan determines who you connect with. Then the power of focus. Ah, Pastor, have you ever been distracted many times? Listen to this. After one year of my ministry, a man came. He said that one, some Igbo people are coming from abroad. That we should come. They will take us to America. Because they didn't know their vision. God said to me, the first five years of your church, don't travel. I didn't bother to look for visa to travel abroad. This is for all the pastors who want to go and preach in America and Europe. God said to me, don't leave. Walk your walk. And I'm doing it. Today, if I'm going abroad to preach for any church, they buy my ticket. They put me in hotel. That is honor, sir. It's not to go and get visa. You are looking for money to buy a ticket. Then you are looking for who to preach for. God didn't send you. That's why nobody invited you. If God actually sent you, they will invite you, send you an email, correspondence to your office. 
I see pastors, they will leave Nigeria. Three months, they're in America. You, in fact, you have no vision. If you have a vision, no vision will take you outside your church for three months. The power of focus. I was preaching in Houston. Somebody said, just relocate. Stay in Houston. Bring your family. I didn't answer him a word. I bought my ticket. I entered plane. I came back to Nigeria. Because that was not a vision. A lot of people have diverted from God's vision for their life. The other one I spoke about is the force of wisdom, sir. Ah, when I look at Archbishop Benson and Reader House, I see wisdom. When I look at Bishop David Oyedepo, I see wisdom. When I look at Pastor Chris Oyak Lome of Christ Embassy, I see wisdom. When I look at myself, I'm trying a little bit, I see wisdom. Sir, there is no high flyer without wisdom. Wisdom is what divides the boys from the men. You need wisdom to understand what to do, how to do it, and when to do it. Then you need specialized skill. The last one I'm going to add that will help you is time. Can I talk to you, ladies and gentlemen? Everybody you see today who is doing something great understand the value of timing. You need to understand that time is money, time is currency. This is very important. To everything under the heaven, there is a time and there is a season. I told a young man who is a pastor, I said, no, the time where you do church, 9 o'clock on Sunday is over. He said, what do I do? I said, bring your service to 6.30. People want to go to church now and come back and face other things. The time they close service by one is over. No. It's, you can be suspended in our church as a pastor to start a service without a timetable. You will be fired. The first thing I do when I come to church, 30, 40 minutes before service, you must give me the timetable for that day. Who is taking prayer? Who is taking worship? Who is taking this? I must know. So that I don't walk into service and be doing guest work. I'm excited. I'm excited to come your way. And I believe, God, you have been blessed. Don't ever forget this. If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? If you have not given your life to Jesus, you may prosper here on earth or land in hell. But that's not God's will for your life. Therefore, I want you to pray this prayer with me, wherever you are watching me from across the world. Jesus, I accept you into my life. I believe you came. You died. God raised you on the third day to save my life. I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Welcome to the family of God. God bless you. Please send me your questions. Call us, send us emails, text messages. I'm going to personally respond to you. The next edition, I'll be taking some questions, so I want to hear your own question. What is bothering you? You God bless you. To get a copy of this teaching, books and messages by Pastor Charles Usazua and other ministries materials, please visit Raka Resource Center, Kilometer 10, Sapler Road, inside Rock of Ages Compound, Obe Benensity, or visit www.rakai.org or call 070-3356-4665. Thanks for watching.